Hey, good morning guys. Happy Saturday to you. So we're out here working on the uh, transit van a little bit here on this uh, Saturday morning. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time to spend on it today, but I did want to get something done. So let me show you what I'm working on today. So I showed you in the past previous video where I mounted my, uh, my slide for my fridge. And it leaves a fairly narrow passageway to get in and out of the van. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of... Oh, okay, so these are the two bolts that hold this platform down. These are the two bolts that actually hold it down to the frame of the vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this frame over and back. I'm going to have to drill a couple of holes that correspond with those two mounts there. So I'll drill a couple of holes in the frame, reposition it, so it'll actually move the frame back a little bit. And that's just going to give me, I don't know, what are we talking here, uh, six inches or so from here to here. That'll probably move me back about six inches. So I'll gain another six inches here in the, uh, in the path to get in and out of the van. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get this unbolted. Got to take the four bolts out of here to get this uh, tray out. Reposition where I think I'm going to need it. Drill a couple pilot holes. Or I should say drill a couple new holes in the frame itself. Rebolt it back down to the frame. And um, we'll kind of go from there and see how that works. So that's the project for the day. It looks like we're looking at a 12 millimeter deep little socket needed here, bust these guys loose. And this is just, uh, you know, all part of the mock-up stage here, so that's why I went ahead and did that to actually see if this was going to work out right, so probably going to have to take this whole, uh, I'm going to have to take this out too here, so all right, we'll get that done. Come back. Time to get a hammer. Get those out. Stick this back in there. It looks like one one of those are gonna line up. This board's gonna be need to be a little wider, I can see that. Maybe. Just maybe. Get something to mark this. Okay, so I measured this off already. I'm gonna be able to use um this hole here, and I measured over uh, to where the, the other hole's gonna have to get drilled. It's gonna be in here somewhere. I got it marked off on the back side, but with a black marker, it's tough, to, tough for you to see on the camera. But the first thing I'm gonna have to do is go ahead and, uh, you know, run me a straight line 
here where those holes line up so I can drill my new hole in the right position. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna, gonna mark my straight line and uh, uh, go ahead and get that hole drilled there. So this should, should be pretty All simple. Right, so with the use of my, my square here for a straight edge, if you can barely see that, to, to run my line across there, I used the speed square um, to, to get my, uh, my placement for the uh, where the hole needs to go. Pretty much X marks the spot, so let's go ahead and get this hole drilled. I got the first hole drilled there. Uh, probably tough to see, but that was kind of like a pilot bit, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a larger diameter bit here to enlarge the hole for the to receive the bolt. Stack up a couple extra washers on there. Bolts. I do have a little bit of room for uh, some adjustment here. Like we're looking about like there for a little rough test fit. So these bolts here, you know, I know I keep using the word mock-up, so we're just mocking this up, but um, at, at the end, I'm going to have different bolts there, uh, maybe the same size, but I want to probably go see my uncle, and if I can get me like a little rectangle tab welded to the top of that bolt, so when they slide in this bracket here, I can actually tighten them up and they'll... Um, the, the bolt just won't spin. It'll actually, that tab will allow it to bind in the little receiver bracket that's in there so I can, you know, get a good crank on there with some nylon lock nuts and then when I want to take it off, I don't have to worry about, you know, the bolt just spinning and, and being a, a pain in the ass to get out. So that's, uh, that's a long-term uh, solution for those bolts. And wherever, there's a, I'm gonna need a few of them. So man, maybe one, two, three, probably just three of them actually those little tabs welded on there wouldn't probably take about a second to do so yeah so this is what we're looking at here that gives me it's gonna give a little more room all right so we'll trim off this section here you know that eventually is gonna get uh, trimmed down and that'll leave more space to get in and out of there so that's all we were doing today so getting this bracket in here that's actually secured pretty good for the time being let me go ahead and set the fridge in there and get a better visual so i've never really did a an actual review on this arb fridge uh but i can tell you that i've used it i don't know i'm thinking uh, about three years now and it's very low amp draw uh works great for running off uh you know regular household current or 12 volt so it really drills low off uh 12 volt and it's a fridge freezer i mean so i can run this off 12 volt and some of these coolers that you see will um, 
will only take the temperature of the cooler down to like 40 degrees below uh, the ambient temperature. So if it's 90 degrees, you know, it's only going to knock it down 40 degrees as, as cold as the cooler will get. So, you know, you're talking 50 degree cooler, which is not very good. So this one here, even if it's 100 degrees out, I can set this thing to zero and it'll freeze. And it's a true fridge freezer. So uh, it's a quality, quality fridge freezer. It's not cheap. Um, and it's not very big, so This is a, a 37 quart f Fridge and I mean it's great for drinks and some food, but it, you know, it's not doesn't have a lot of room if you're going on a multi-day trip, so I did come up with a solution for that, you know for uh, For extended trips. Let me show you what I did here. So basically my solution for uh, my lack of fridge space is this right here so this is this is another ARB fridge, but this is a 50 quart, so it's a little, little bit bigger. Um, should uh, should work well off our our eventual solar setup and our battery bank because these do draw a pretty pretty low uh, amp draw. Now these fridge freezers from ARB are not cheap, that is for sure. And the only reason that I bought this fridge when I did. Because then I'm an REI member, I have an REI credit card. Um, when you shop at REI, you accrue uh, dividend points, which is you know equal to, to cash credit. Using my credit card, I get cash dividends for that. And once a year, they do a 20% uh, 20% 20 um, 20 discount off of one uh, regular priced item. So I mean, it's expensive. So I took 20% off of that. I had two years worth of dividends saved up, which was. I don't know about 300 bucks so between the 20 percent and the 300 dollars it was it was almost half off so it was considerable savings and you know i felt now was the time to get it so um that's that's the solution for for our lack of fridge space on the inside this will be kind of overflow stuff on the outside one could be a fridge one could be a freezer however that's going to work um it's going to work well like i said i've used these arb fridge for about three years now and you know they work great you know you have it plugged in on 12 volt you plug it into an, an outlet automatically switches over to uh you know your your 110 comes off the 12 volt dc so um that's going to work good for for our operation uh on our extended travel so well i hope you enjoyed the video that's about all i have for today it was a small little project getting this uh fridge repositioned and uh, show you what we our solution for the small fridge space was so Anyway, appreciate you watching. You have a great day. We'll see you next time on a big transit adventure. Peace.